This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. My brother from another mother, and I'm saying brother from another mother because you know I'm, I spent some time with your mother, and she's so delightful. Yeah, she's still traumatized by that experience. Rishi. <laughs> <laughs> what a Randy Rishi, what a scoundrel you are! <laughs> no, we were just discussing why he's calling me Randy Rishi is because you know uh, radio presenters hmm. in this day and age have monikers. Hi, Rasika Dugal, by the way. Hi. <laughs> you know, so th- you know, I have colleagues who are Rangili Rochi and Picture Pandey, and you know, uh, eminent uh, performers, and we, we came to the conclusion that I must have a, a prefix. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I actually don't have one yet. I don't. He has one at home, and people who I mean, have initials. I have an initial <laughs> called K. <laughs> <laughs> How did you meet his mom? I met his mom at a very interesting event in Goa. Achha. And I was emceeing that, and she said very vibrant and nice things about me, and uh, I'm a sucker for That's that. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> she told which you he insists, that. <laughs> which he insists on twisting and contorting. <laughs> <laughs> But wonderful to see you guys, <laughs> and. Um, I'm really happy that you've dug your teeth into Dr. Foster, mm-hmm. and uh, the logical question and the oft-repeated question is: Have you seen the original, at least season one? If have have you two. seen it, Rishi? I haven't actually. No. Yeah, I, I saw it uh, long before I was offered the show. I saw it about four or five years ago, and in- uh, interestingly, I was told by an agent that I was trying to woo. uh that if you want to see really good british content he has a show that uh, ha- is doing really well at the moment and that was dr foster so when they called me i just jumped up and said hey this is the show i've seen before and it's really lovely and uh, it'd be a, re- a real pleasure to be a part of it mm-hmm. and you i saw the show uh, when i was asked to do this one actually i hadn't there seen there two seasons isn't it there two seasons i've seen only season 1 mm-hmm. and uh, yeah i i <laughs> didn't know whether it was a good idea to watch it before going into this or not i didn't watch it during of course because i sort of didn't want to um end up mimicking another performance or imitating another performance uh and i tried to forget what i had watched earlier also but it was too compelling and it stayed in my memory for a while <laughs> so maybe next time i work on adapted content i'll try not watching mm. the original no also because I, i'm going to try and release this only on the 22nd or shortly after so that there are no spoilers hmm. Uh, she does go nuts. I think in second season, the second season or something, or does she already start going nuts in the first one? Oh, pretty much through the first <laughs> as well. <laughs> A lot towards the end of the first, mm. but uh, uh, during during it, I think she's wondering whether she should go nuts or not, and then in the end, she decides that's the only way to be. <laughs> yeah, which is actually quite an uh, an accurate description of marriage. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> we speak with experience. We, uh, we are all much married here, so yeah. we can we can crack all the yeah. marriage jokes that we want. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because we're, you know, it's like when you're in prison, you can joke about prison. Right? You know, we're lucky to be married to wonderful partners. All three of us, nothing to complain. But, but yeah, you, the thing about doing content based on marriage is, you think being married yourself will prepare you, but it doesn't. Yeah, what do you say to that? I think marriage. Uh... Sorry, what was the question again? The question is, just because you're married does not mean that you will. knock a role on marriage based on marriage out of the park i'm trying to figure out which is the more difficult part of uh, <laughs> uh, is it being married, married being married or playing a married <laughs> man <laughs> <laughs> no you always say oh you know it's going to be about a couple yeah dr yeah. foster so i out of love is going to be very easy for me because i'm married myself <laughs> but, but that's not the way it is, is i said i i i have i've never really thought about that what i have thought about is having a child and that's easier i think that's easier to relate to children on the set because i've worked with kids in the past and uh, you know we actors are always wanting the attention and somehow children are always cuter than us so <laughs> you're like oh he's getting more attention he's better than me in this frame <laughs> yeah children but, are animals in dreams yeah. they just steal your thunder, steal your thunder. <laughs> so uh, but i think uh, having two children now uh, as you also have two children rishi uh, randy rishi um, <laughs> i think uh, it's 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 not really nice i've done two series now there was typewriter before this uh. and then now uh, Uh, out of love and both of them i have children in and it feels uh, it's quite nice to work with them you know uh, because you understand them from now your own child's point of view does this couple have one child in the series or two one child. just one child one. yeah okay. i actually think the opposite i think i can only feel uh, some maternal instincts on screen <laughs> because i know <laughs> that i have to send them off to their real mother after the show is over how many days did you film this how many days did you film this 50 3 or 54 and are you saying in 53 days purab kohli didn't impress upon you or chadda mm-hmm. whenever he met chadda if 
to have children or adopt children or whatever i'm sure he would have we had a conversation point. once <laughs> i have this conversation with everybody actually sure. <laughs> when you're not married they say marry marry marry, marry. yeah exactly when you marry they say have children, 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 children. children and it's a great conversation <laughs> <laughs> everybody has does does impress upon you their own views <laughs> correct and you nicely listen and you just let yeah, it yeah and then i just go day. back home and party <laughs> She but is she equipped for the role. Well, well, to be honest, she has said that we are thinking about it. <laughs> that's that, that. That's my good. It's a very long thought. <laughs> yeah. See, when you're in a Punjabi family and you visit your family often enough, you yeah. you you find these lines which are good ones to give to people here and there, so that nobody asks you any and more questions. There's no escaping because you're Punjabi from both sides. Chadals or Punjabi, correct, so correct. you're huh. you're nailed. Yeah, nailed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I found it a a bit of a cliche. I mean, I know that Ijaz, who you worked with in Hamid, and we did that wonderful. interview where you know uh, you came in and he was there but i'm just thinking that it's it's such a cliche to say here is a story on infidelity and let's get the shoot to direct it because he's done sai bivi or gangster <laughs> <laughs> but i mean people do that in a good way isn't it ke wo achhi comedy banata hai wo serious film banata hai ye infidelity banata hai <laughs> I wonder if it's crossed their mind actually. <laughs> yeah. Of course it did. Of course it did. It was an algorithm that was run no, through. No, what did what did the show bring to the table? And tell me how many episodes that Ajaz directed, how many he directed, or who was the showrunner? What's it all about? The structure, yeah. It has directed three, uh, the last three, three, four, five, and uh, Tishu directed one and two. I think it was interesting to have Tishu because I think uh, if you watch the original, also it's like a drama thriller. And so I think Tishu really brought in 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 the style of filmmaking, especially the thriller element in the first two episodes. So that that I think is an interesting uh, uh, way to tell this story. And uh, in in terms of. Uh, of the thriller of it uh, i saw a tishu film which I, which is still one of my all time favorites Hasil. called hasil hasil yeah, it's, it's my all time have you yeah. seen it have you yeah. seen it yeah, yeah. yeah. super you know i was living in lucknow at that time yeah. i was freaked out of my mind i remember when i met tishu i told him you know you really made my life in lucknow miserable <laughs> because i watched hasil and i was like oh yeah, my god can i even step hasil. out mm-hmm. <laughs> and i, mean, I was living very close to the hasil is pouncing tomar which i also really yeah. liked and then even sai bibi and gangster is a is a or gangster is a is the first time both of you worked with them Yeah. Yes, first time I even met him. I've okay. never met him before. So what is what is it that's unique that he brought to the table? What did you enjoy in those two episodes? I think for me, uh number one because they shoot such a great writer also. Uh it's nice to have a writer director who's uh, so I mean, he and also he's an actor. He studied at NIT to be an actor. So uh it's it's a dream for an actor to work with someone like that who is looking at it a of course he's a director b he's also has the capability of writing things so if you are feeling not comfortable with certain things he's quickly sort of swings it around and probably writes it better than it origi- originally was written and then on top of that he understands where actors come from at least with me that's what worked and uh, i mean it was so easy to talk to him and sometimes i didn't even have to say things and he already knew that i was having trouble with something so he would come around and change it and say chai sa kar le so um, and his energy he's got a really good energy on the set um, he's li- i i would say the issues slightly uh, in because he's been directing for so many years he's slightly an old school director where he takes full control and full charge and wants to control everything on the set and i'm a little old school in my thought also where i like that i enjoy that you know because there's one beacon that you're looking at and then that's where you have to go you know so i i enjoyed working with uh, the issue a, a, a lot actually and and I, as i said i never met him before uh, i'd seen his films i'd liked his films and uh, when you meet him for the first few times he you might find him a bit standoffish and uh, even a bit rude <laughs> but uh, after a while when you get to know him well he's he's really a cool guy to work for and <clears throat> in that aspect because you've done hamid with ejaz Uh, there's obviously a comfort factor already <laughs> and did he do the first three episodes or did he do random numbers how did it work he did with the jazz 3 4 5 3 4 5 yeah so, so the last one three. the last three hmm. so I- i've always wondered how this thing works i mean i look at abbas and mastan <laughs> i look at shishank and shamit have done, done one shamit have done one together which is how's the rest mm-hmm. you know shishank ghosh and, and samit bas and i'm like you know how does one just take over from where the other left off but apparently it's a very normal thing in the west you know explain that to me i mean it's it is i mean this yeah. was my first experience in spite, in spite of the fact that i've done uh, other series 
all of those were directed by <coughs> one director. Mirzapur, yes, by with Karan and Gurmeet, they've been working together for very, very long, so they're almost like the same person. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> 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 that's the case with the Abbasan also. People say they're the same person. They dress the same person. There's a third brother also. I just want to. Yeah, the Burma. I want to watch Karan and Gurmeet hear this about being compared to Abbasan. Really, I just want to watch it. But and Delhi Crime is directed by one director, so this was my first experience. Also, I didn't know what I was walking into. It was uh, very different, but uh, quite interesting also. And I think uh, uh, it helped that I already knew, I already had a working relationship with Ajaz, so I just had to sort of discover it with Tigmanshu. So I had uh, not a as difficult a task as Purab had. Probably. Yeah, you were thrown to the lions. I'm not yeah. saying Ajaz and Tigmanshu are lions. <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> we are saying it. <laughs> but, you <laughs> had, <laughs> but you had no like, you know, history or you know, I know this guy, this that. You were just there. I mean, and well, but you, I, you enjoyed that. I I enjoy I enjoyed. Uh, see, it was like working on two different projects. In the past, I have worked with directors, and I worked with actually four directors on one project. I did Sensei. It had four directors at one time, and it's uh, but it's always held um, at some level as a vision that. of one person. So, mm -hmm. as you said, the showrunner is one person who holds the vision of the of the entire of the entire show. So they all following line, and they were quite big directors. All four of them were quite big, but they were all listening to Lana Wachowski and, and going down uh, her vision of the show because she also is the writer of the show. Um, whereas here on this part, it was interesting because um, it was a change of director because the show was not around after after Ajaz took over and Ajaz then became the main director on the show. And, I'm, and I have to say the day that the shift happened was difficult because it was suddenly now you're doing the same character, you're doing the same series, but the whole energy has changed. But the interesting thing about the writing of this show is that the energy does change even in the writing from the second episode to the third episode. So suddenly, as Rasika pointed out, that the first two episodes are pacey and very thriller-like, the third episode suddenly becomes more bending towards the drama of it because all the, all the, can I say shit? Yeah, <laughs> you said Randy, you said <laughs> shit. <laughs> Just avoid the F word. Yeah, okay, avoid the F word. <laughs> so that is when, the, when everything starts sort of seeping down, you know, it's like, okay, now you have to deal with that and... Uh, I think it was nice to have a, a new kind of um, head to to work that through, and uh, we had I had some adjustment period of saying, okay, this is what my character was doing there, and now what he's doing here, and then finally, Ajaz, as as lovely as he is, and takes in what everybody says and listens, and sort of tries and then come out with something, took it in. We had a little bit of tutu tu me me also, and then finally we arrived on the same page, and then we were able to really comfortably finish the. The rest of the world. So, listen again. I'm telling you, the, the, don't worry about the spoilers because it's not a theatrical release where it's important to get that first weekend out of the way. Mm -hmm. With web series, I try and you know play it on the day of release or maybe even after because it's mm -hmm. there for posterity. Yeah. So you know you're not going to give those spoilers away. But who, who plays the other woman and uh, the actress? Mm -hmm. Are you able to tell me that? This is going to be af on air after. Uh, after. 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 Yeah. So it's. Hmm. Uh, Myrtle says Myrtle no. is popped up. <laughs> we will now pan to Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Myrtle, even if you play it after the release date, we are not supposed to say the woman's name. Are My. <laughs> Why? After the release. Anyway. Well, well, she's a, she's she's relatively new, so um, not too many people will know. I'll say that. But um, I mean, it's better that you uh, see the Fair show enough. yet. Give no, but anything why am I asking you? Seen it yet when they're listening to you? Fair enough. No, no the question I, I want to lead up to is uh, I, playing the other woman is not an easy part for any actor. You know, you need a certain level of maturity, even if you're playing a younger woman, mm. even if you're playing a woman in the in the early twenties. So, and do it's you done think? Beautifully uh, in the original. Yeah, yeah. So as has she brought that across? What to you is your assessment without naming the actor, my friend? Me? Um, I think uh, one of the things that I felt acting, I haven't seen the show. Rasika actually has seen the show, so she'll have a better answer for this. But uh, I haven't seen the episodes. But just acting with everybody on this, I think one of the uh, strong points of Out of Love is that it's got great performances. Uh, I mean, when you go to a go to a set and you work, you normally can tell in the first couple of days that it's a ye week hai, wo week hai. But I think this is one one place where I really felt like uh, everybody was uh, was trying to um, keep up to uh, a certain level. 
because everything was being delivered at a certain level and even this uh, young lady in question <laughs> uh, is, I almost said her name he who uh, she who can't, can't be named, be named. <laughs> she who can't be named uh, I mean though she's uh, new she kept sort of wanting to do better you know you just keep seeing her coming in watching Rasika watching me watching other people and saying that listen I really have to come up my game because I uh, I mean I'm not saying that I'm good but Rasika's damn good. So oh. uh, <laughs> we were all trying to match up to Rasika's <laughs> level basically. Thanks guys. So did you see the pressure situation? Did you see, did you see, <laughs> did you see Type Rider? Did you see Type Rider? No, I didn't. I can't watch horror. Oh, you can't. <laughs> can't. Did you see Delhi Cram? My, my mother had the same response. <laughs> did you see Delhi Cram? I've seen Delhi Cram. I saw it after she? I she's superb in it and the show is superb. In fact, I saw it after I uh, in one of the gaps we had while we were shooting. Unbelievable! Uh, I have never up. seen a lady, a young novice lady constable. Uh, a lot of interns could learn from that. Who <laughs> 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 played with, with such, uh, with such diligence, <laughs> but yet, uh, you know, I'm new. I'm a little unsure of certain things, but I can be sure when I want to. which is just fabulous this uh, you know it, this is one of those parts that you will be remembered for forever and Thank ever you. well done well done rasika it's one that i will remember as well mm. okay so uh, are you in a position to tell me any of the supporting cast because yeah, yeah. Yeah, lots yeah, of them this the yeah. brilliant harsh chaya <coughs> who's super who is who is been does he play your friend his friend what He plays He's the woman who. Oh, don't say that. Oh. You know, the you know, woman who can't be named <laughs> husband. <laughs> <laughs> But you're a doctor. Okay, fine. You're a doctor. Yeah. That much we can talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is she a general practitioner or is she a general surgeon and things like that? GP. And I find it very, very fascinating that people in the most clinical of professions can have this total other side when they can just lose their shit. Yeah, I know. And that must be of particular interest to you. After reading this script, I I was afraid to go to my doctor. I'm like, I'm wondering <laughs> what this guy is thinking. What kind of what kind of equipment they have access <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. and what they can do like with it. Like a pair of scissors <laughs> can be used in many different ways. <laughs> so yeah. I'm already intrigued. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So yeah. So there's this whole other aspect. It's like a shrink or a psychologist who has her own share of psychological problems. isn't it yeah. you know that must yeah. be so interesting for you yeah. that at work she's like this and then you know she suddenly transforms in her personal life oh uh, and actually i mean she is a very uh, and what what i i i found interesting was that she's also this sort of committed doctor so she feels like she always needs to take care of people around her and you see that and then you see this flipping at certain points and also i think the empathy for this character comes from there as well that she seemingly so sorted right but then this can also happen so that's where i think the yeah that's my problem with a lot of uh, films stroke series that talk about infidelity is they end up making judgments correct how is uh, out of love uh, you you know you're the cheating partner initially uh, and does it blame you for all the misfortune that's happening or is there enough reason for you in the script to be the way you are for your weaknesses to come out and and you know you you to cheat on on your marriage so i'll answer the second question first rishi because it's very interesting that uh, this character uh, which is one of my big problems while playing it was that he's an out and out liar he blatantly lies to his wife he blatantly lies to his son but he's a very loving husband otherwise and he's uh, i mean him and uh, dr meera akash kapoor and dr meera kapoor have a Uh, a beautiful uh, loving relationship and physically and romantically and emotionally so all of that is all in place you know so it's not like there's a problem in the marriage and they're fighting and things are not working out and this is why he's going after another woman his only problem is that he loves two women and he's cheating on his wife and he's lying to her about it because the, the as in the show as in the trailer you see where she asks him and he and he says no so my i had a big problem with that because there was nothing written to tell you what his where what his source is where he's coming from or justifying him as a character and saying that uh, okay this is the reason why he does these things and i sat down with tishu one day and said ki yaar kuch to empathy to hoga iske liye kahan se aa raha hai what is he doing he's like kuch nahi ye to khokla hai ekdam and that made it actually easier for me because i completely detached from the character because in the beginning i was going back my wife lucy was there uh, while we were shooting and i'd go back to her and tell her you know i'm having a real tough time because this guy's such a dishonest man and uh, one of the things i hate in life is to lie about things i find it very burdening so i said i i just i can't find his source you know and she said why don't you go and have a chat with him and then i went and had a chat with tishu and then when i came back i was like 
actually it's really easy i can just completely dissociate disassociate myself from this guy and i put on his shoes and his clothes and become him and then leave and come back and be poor of kohli it's really easy so that part of it got sorted beautiful out. in one line <laughs> kokla <laughs> yeah. that explains yeah. it yeah 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 so uh, he's a fun loving guy but he hates dealing with these kind of things he's just too busy about let's have a good time in life you know and everything else will sort and his out. reasoning is i've been a good father and a good husband by providing for them Correct. and you know being right. there for them emotionally right. so that gives so me the problem yeah. so what's your problem about all of this and wow. that's how, that's how it was and your first question which i have forgotten <laughs> <laughs> what was the first question you forgot you also you have a great treat yeah. yeah. perfect <laughs> but i think you more or less answered everything so we shall we shall let it fly and <laughs> is that because it does not give a reason for something like this to happen in a marriage because it doesn't try to justify why this would happen in a marriage or try to justify why he does it that's why i think it mm. doesn't end up taking a, a moral stand on or judge the issue or judge the situation and i think very importantly also that was the first question is that uh the way the original show and this is one of the reasons why i jumped up to even do out of love because you see the original show which they've done so beautifully and now even in this show is that all the characters are gray there's no black or white at all you know so even akash you start off with this feeling of uh, what is he he's so dark and he's doing all these things and he's lying to her and he's going on but when you see how what what meera becomes she also becomes really dark shades of gray by the end of by the end of the show and then suddenly you're like okay he's not so bad in comparison to this you know <laughs> so it's like they both are like dancing in this really I always Vast make gray you look scale, good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like suddenly you're like, okay, who's who's really the dark person here? You know, so that's the interesting thing about. Or you're basically like the bully. Like the basically the sorry. I think that. Any, yeah, बिल्कुल any. No, and and she is initially she is the diametric opposite of this because you can fault her for a million things, but you can't fault her for fidelity. I mean, she this is the only man that her life has revolved with mm-hmm. uh, around mm-hmm. till that point of time, right, Rasika? Yeah. 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 Just a little bit about her and her relationship with him. Mm, so in the in the story, I think she gave up a lot to be a part of this. So it's set in Kunur, and uh, Kunur is a small society, and everybody there knows everybody. They grew up with each other. So Akash is one of those people who grew up in the small town where the neighbor has been his friends for his friend for so many years, and everybody knows everything about everybody. Uh, and she is walked into this place where this little town where you know she's left her. hometown and chosen to move here with him where she doesn't know anybody and she's always a sort of a little bit of an outsider to everybody's story or everybody's uh, whatever they share with each other so i think uh, uh, for her her whole life uh, is about being that committed doctor she's respected in the town as well and being a loving partner and a caring mother and uh, besides the sort of regular things that happen in life i think she's one of those people who believes that her life is beautiful and uh, it's going really well and uh, so i think something like this really shatters Shatter. all of that because wow. the whole world is structured around this being in this place with this man. so she could have been in the kokila bains and the leelavatis and the forbeses of the world hmm. but she's gone and become this community doctor which in itself is quite a transition and she's found and, she's found happiness in that and mm. like you know that happens in small towns a lot actually yeah. and there's and especially in uh, in the mountains when you mm. <laughs> when you move to the mountains and you know everybody has uh, uh, Everybody is your cousin. <laughs> it's like totally. the so difficult to have an affair. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, <laughs> smart <laughs> man. <laughs> How did you find her? <laughs> yeah, Does it ever stop anybody <laughs> having an affair with your cousins? <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, I have these wonderful memories of going to Kunur. I mean, Uti was always the and Kodai Canal and Uti were always the crowded ones mm-hmm. here down south. And Kunur was always this this sweet little. Uh, you, know, you, you, know, you grew up in Delhi, you know, in Chennai. No, I actually grew up all over the country. I went to school in Calcutta. Mm-hmm. and then i was in lucknow for a couple of years and then i went to delhi and mm-hmm. then i i came to do my post grad here at zavias so, you know, so i'm a, like a, a services Tamil child but i'm not a services child i never lived in tamil nadu ever yeah no i've i've never lived in tamil nadu that's interesting mm-hmm. yeah my parents now live in bangalore my dad retired from bombay and moved there mm-hmm. but that's me and i'm not important it's you guys <laughs> the focus but yeah i mean i have these you know my nani my dadi were all down south and we, we used to go off. the default thing in the summer was to go to kodaikanal or to go to uti uh, mm-hmm. or to go to kurg And then to Kunur, and Kunur was always an eternal favorite because it's very British. You know. yeah. Is it still like that? I haven't been in like fifteen years. My God. Well, you, the colonial hangover is still there in terms of the architecture. You yeah. see that a mm. lot. 
uh, I wonder the chocolate, uh, the whole, the whole chocolate production it comes from that time too. Mm. Uh, of course, the tea, uh, which is dying out. Uh, a lot of the tea plantations are sort of clearing up because uh, it's and become very complex. And avocado. Yeah, mm-hmm. by avocado, different herbs uh, that they're growing over there, berries, lots of berries, because the climate is a lot like England, actually. Mm. And um, tea is just too competitive for them. Their costs are higher uh, than Kenya. I was living in a in a in a uh, Ayurvedic retreat actually, and the owner had some tea gardens down. So he was telling me all this information. That's why I'm relaying it to you. But yes, definitely, I think uh, the way they speak, the way they uh, some of I mean, you go into the higher hills, you see these really sort of British-looking houses, and uh, some of them. I, I mean, very strangely, I'm I. Um, we were walking up, um, me and my wife, we went up for a walk up on one of these hills and there were these beautiful houses and there was this lady who clearly was working in one of those houses, was walking up and with us and uh, she was finding my son very cute, so she was coming and playing with him. And then we started asking, I said, you work in this house? She said, yeah. He said, are the owners in? And she said, master is in. <laughs> like master, <laughs> such a colonial yeah. thing to say. <laughs> such a colonial era yeah, thing yeah. to say. So I think there is a hangover somewhere. So what I'm, did, did you get Chada to come over, or was he too busy working with his office, multiple seasons and I things like that? He came for a bit, like two, three days, I think. Chada and me had a very good monkey experience together. You yeah, did. the we monkey came and drank their tea. Yeah, we both sat down. <laughs> this is when I was before I moved into the retreat. I was at the Taj where we all were staying, and uh, Chada ji came. Chada is Mukul Chada, Rasika Dugal's uh, husband who is in a series called Office, also on Hotstar. In case nice plug, wow. brother. Thank you very well much. Well played. Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting context to yeah. for the, for the yeah. listeners. And yeah. um, he came in and I know Chadda for, a, for actually before I know Rasika also, I know Chadda for likewise, a long time. Yeah, likewise, yeah, likewise, yeah. So Chadda came and he messaged and said, I am I am and I'm here and he woke up quite late and he came down and I was not called that day for shootings. So we both sat down in the garden. British and uh, with a cup of tea. teas and, uh, <laughs> and, our, and our biscuits and then suddenly there's this like army of monkeys that came and raided us I've got photographs I'll show you Tamil Nadu this. monkeys yeah. brother oh my <laughs> god they came and they swung it and first of so five of smaller ones came and we both of us I mean the, the men we were and the raging lions and us like we just got up and ran behind the pillar and, <laughs> and hid from them and they came they took our biscuits of course and then they started sipping the tea <laughs> sipping the bloody tea and both of us are looking in, in oh amazement God. and then one big guy comes on the, of course he was the alpha with his big yeah Big, well hung, uh, with his well hung jewels and, and <laughs> very red in color <laughs> and stood there exposing it showing it to everybody saying don't mess with me man mine's big yeah. this is what this is what Miss Malini would call TMI too much information but still <laughs> TMI. Yeah. <laughs> but we were, we were, we were impressed. We were the impressed monkeys of Kunu are quite a story. By, by, by the Velang or by the... By, by him in general. <laughs> by him in general. <laughs> and all of him. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. This this is the jewel of this interview. <laughs> Maybe we should make promos out of it. So, uh, okay, I'll ask a few questions before we wrap. So this is concert season. Amit Tiveri is con- on concert. Dua Lipa and Katy Perry have just uh, been on tour. U2 U- is coming into town. Oh, that's exciting. A concert that you've been to, it could be Indian, could be international, that you can't forget. Rasika. I've never been to a concert. You can't be a concert virgin. No, I don't like concerts. I'm noise averse. No, no, but then you must have gone to some Arijit Singh or some Spik McKay or something like that. No, actually, in fact, I realized In LSR, there must have been some college. Oh, yeah, Indian Ocean. College festival or something. Yeah, Indian Ocean. You did? Yeah. They came and played in LSR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's so your the memories, of, the memories yeah. of that concert, drooling girls. <laughs> oh, I was in the students' union and I was doing gate duty. <laughs> it's like, who has a pass? Show me your pass. That's what but I it did go doing. for the gig ultimately. I mean, you yeah, I mean, it was it. happening next to when I was doing gate duty. Yeah, I could hear it. It's <laughs> really boring. You can't find me a concert experience. I'm not the kind of person who goes to a concert. I'm damn boring. In fact, I met somebody recently and she was like, you know, I went for the concert. I was like, how does it feel? <laughs> Tell me about this experience that I've not had. You, on the other hand, must have been to many concerts because of the work of it yeah. from the Channel V day. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, anything yeah. that's memorable? In fact, there are quite a few memories. I mean, I'm art- artists across, I mean, from Western artists and Indian artists also. And we've had some great... Uh, times hosting the show so I've had uh, great opportunities to view some of these acts from backstage and I think uh, one of the most um, uh, lovely concerts I went to is um, Elton Jones in Bangalore Mm. when he came to Bangalore to play and I was uh, doing an interview with him backstage so I interviewed him and then 
he, he, my interview was the last one he did, so he sort of pretty much interviewed him in the wings, and then he walked onto stage and performed, and I stood there and watched him play the piano and sing uh, from backstage, which is uh, was quite. He magical. played "Candle in the Wind" and all those songs. Everything, yeah? everything, a beautiful concert it was. Yeah, wow. beautiful concert. Uh, a road trip that you've been to that's really memorable. A long drive that you've been on, Rasika. Yeah, I'm the most boring person in this world. Road trip that I've been to that's really memorable. Yeah, in Italy. So we drove Amalfi through Coast? through Tuscany. Yeah. Through Tuscany, yeah. yeah. And then That's actually on Purab's recommendation, then drove from Florence to Rome. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So highlights on that drive. Did you stop by for some wine? Did you see Sophia Loren's she house? She drank so much she doesn't remember. I was, I was hoping <laughs> yeah, that too. But you know, I was hoping in Tuscany that I would bump into George Clooney. That was my fantasy. <laughs> I was like, but in Tuscany you wake up and you drink Prosecco. So, I mean, yeah. you and don't everybody to, looks like George Clooney. To. All the men look <laughs> yeah, like George Clooney. Then you wake up and have Prosecco. Hopefully. <laughs> forgot about George Clooney looking at all those Italian men. <laughs> George? Who's George? <laughs> George <Gio. laughs> And did, did you hire a, a vehicle or did you just yeah, yeah, and it's actually damn hard to drive because they have all these ZTL zones, are they called? And they're not really well marked out and you get fined really heavily if you drive through them. So you have to... Yeah, some some streets in the cities have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and also. apparently you get fined even a year later. So we, with Chadda and I were sitting at home and we, we've not got any post on it. The good thing is to cancel your credit card as soon as you come back. <laughs> <laughs> that is a vital travel trip, brother. So, so a, a, a road trip that you've been on is really memorable. And give There's me so many, Rishi. I mean, I've done a show which I drove 26,000 kilometers around the country. So, I mean, I've done so much travel. Driving. And I just did, actually, I'll tell you my last one, which was uh, two right weeks now. ago. Yeah, two weeks ago, I drove from London to Normandy in France. And then I, uh, so we took the car across on the boat. Um, and then we drove up from France, which is the best highways in the world. I mean, very expensive tolls, but beautiful highways to drive on. So from France, we drove all the way up to Holland because my sister's in The Hague. So we went to see my sister's family. So we went up to The Hague. And um, I mean, France is great, but Belgium has the worst driving. I mean, when you come to Belgium, you think you're in some really um, uh, three tires Indian city, you know, it's like they're swinging across the motorway. And then from there, we went back down into the south of England to Dorset. A lot of driving over two and a half weeks. And it was just fun because my kids, the first long drive that they've been on. And I and my daughter has been on uh, drives in India. We've done Goa, Bombay a few times and she's been with us in the car. But my son, I mean, hats off to him. He was nine months old. He's 10 now, 10 months. But he was nine months old when we did this trip. And he was superb in the car. It was just like amazing to have both the kids at the back, uh, visiting all these cities, family in every bit. And it was just absolutely, I mean, and it was needed because after a hectic shoot of two and a half months, you come back and you do a nice holiday with the family. It's fun. All right, everybody who's <coughs> listening, uh, Out of Love. Starring Purab Kohli and Rasika Dubgal, streaming on Hotstar. It's a Hotstar special. Go and check it out. Thank you, good people. See you soon. Thank, Thank you, Randy Rishi. <laughs> <laughs> I see when you say Randy Rishi once. So. Thank you, Randy Rishi. Oh. Hey.